This episode is partnered with Wild. Do I look like a Jedi right now? <laughs> you will subscribe. Oh my gosh, it's a good day. Woo, DIY friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danny, and today we are doing some dupes. Oh yeah. <laughs> We are back into my guest bedroom series where I have been working to make over my guest bedroom where it started with a fun, dark and moody vibe. It's been a very exciting process. We've already done some demo. We've already torn out some closets, fixed some floors, did some painting. We DIY'd an armoire. We DIY'd a headboard. We brought in the bedding. It's all really coming together slowly but surely. In this bedroom, I'm hoping to create a space that feels very English cottage meets modern vintage, meets light academia. So we're kind of taking three aesthetics and we're kind of jumbling it into one little ball and making it my own. And I'm so excited about it. I'm excited that every little thing going into this space is either secondhand or a DIY that I'm building. And I feel like it just makes this space feels so much more special. Of course, if you are new here, hello, welcome. Feel free to hit that subscribe button. We got so many more DIY projects coming. So much more inspiration of DIY builds, thrift flips, thrifts, cute decor, all the things. So I hope you're ready. Let's get into this episode. Editor, roll the tape. Boop. All right, let's get on to the first DIY. So I wanted to DIY a custom mirror for this space, specifically to go on this wall right here. I love this little space. It's right beside the bookshelf. It gives you enough room. It's, you can see yourself when you're leaving the room, check your hair, see your outfit. I just think a, a full length mirror is a great thing for a guest to have. So I wanted to obviously build something versus buy because that's just what we do here. And I got super inspired inspired by a mirror I found on a website called Claude. So it was a mirror that was designed by LeBlon Studio called the Orla Mirror. And it, look at the fun shape that this mirror has. I love these waves on the edge. It's made of pure walnut. It is a masterful piece. I'm obsessed with it. I have mad respect for all of the people who create these beautiful pieces in the world. Now the original mirror is sitting at 2700 USD and your girl got no pockets for some Something like that. However, I thank them because they're giving me inspiration for how I want to make my mirror. I'm making it my own because I don't really want it to be that curvy, but I do love the idea of these like nice progressive waves that go all around it. So I think we're going to go for more like, you know, just waves. It's like a soft curve, not like a woo. <laughs> you know, we're not going woo, we're going woo. Well, that makes perfect sense. You're probably wondering, well, that's not very English cottage or light academia or modern vintage. <laughs> true. At the same time, I think it's very fun. And there's one thing I said about this space from the beginning is that I wanted this room to never take itself too seriously. I want it to be fun. Every item that goes into this space, I want it to feel fun. And as a home of a DIYer, there's no way I am making a stuffy space. So we're going to have a little fun with some pieces. And this DIY is definitely in that category. I think it's going to look so good on this wall. We're going to make it up with a nice piece of oak to match the headboard and uh, I think it's gonna be great. So I gotta go get all my materials and then we can start this DIY. So let's go build ourselves a DIY mirror. Woohoo! You will enjoy the mirror. <laughs> the door's right here. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, bye. Okay, friends, before I get to the workshop, I wanted to quickly take a moment to thank the partner of this episode, Wild. As I've shared in the past, I've started a personal mission this year to try and reduce the plastic waste I have in my home. And that starts with removing everyday use of plastic products that lead to the throw away culture. You know, the use it, throw it away, and then buy it again. So that's why I'm excited to chat about Wild, who want to remove throw away culture for everyday bathroom 
products like deodorant and body wash. All of their products come in premium reusable cases with compostable refills. They offer a flexible subscription service so your refills come straight in the mail and every time you order you can pick different scents to keep you smelling fresh as daisies all day long. Or in this case we have Ocean's Mist. By using wild products, and not only am I shopping sustainably, I feel like I'm investing in natural ingredients for my body as well. They use safe, natural ingredients that contain no harsh chemicals, aluminum, salts, or parabens. Their products are gentle on my skin, great for all skin types, and they're vegan and cruelty-free, which is pretty cool. And the cherry on the cake, every time you buy from Wild, a tree is planted thanks to their partnership with On Emission. Then the whipped cream on that cherry cake is can we talk about the adorable aluminum cases that you can pick from? I mean, you can have little weens on your case. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you want to discover more about Wild, use my link or scan the QR code on screen. Use my code DIYDanny to get 20% off your first order. That code doesn't last long, so go now. Alrighty, now that we smell fresh, feel fresh, let's go to the workshop. Good morning, friends. We're in the workshop, we're getting ready, we're gonna make a mirror. Let me show you guys. So I went to pick up the mirror yesterday and she hunk a door, she's right here. Da! I know, uh, I'm not gonna unwrap it yet because I don't want it to get scratched. I also got my oak here. So as you can see, it's kind of like creating the shape of my mirror, but let me show you something really cool. I was recently at the ReStore and while I was at the ReStore, I always go check out the tool section because you guys should too. If you're looking for cheap tools, go to the ReStore. You might get lucky and I did. So as you can see here, I got myself a router table. <laughs> I've always wanted a router table. I saw this, it was on sale for $150, okay? Not like top brand or anything, but the reason why this is such a great deal is because it came with the router. So a lot of the times in stores, you can buy yourself a router table, but it doesn't come with the router. Then you have to go and buy the extra accessory. This one came with the router. I'm very excited about this. But please know that even if you don't have a router table, what I'm about to do today, you can absolutely do with just a router. So keep that in mind. But your girl's leveling up. I got a router table now. Let's talk about what we gotta do. So like I mentioned, I'm building this out of oak. So this is a one by six piece of oak. I got 48 inches on this side and I got 17 inches on the smaller pieces on the inside. What I need to do is move this mirror out very carefully. I'm actually not gonna focus on securing this whole frame together first. What I wanna do is remove any of the material that I need to be able to place the mirror inside. And like I said, I'm gonna be using my router and my router table, which is gonna bring this whole thing together. So my mirror is one eighth of an inch. It's so tiny that we really don't need to take a whole lot out of this. So all I need to do is just set up my router. If I wasn't using a table, I would have like a little jig that I can run my router along. I'm gonna remove one inch from the sides and I'm gonna remove three inches from the top and bottom. Literally, I'm going in like under a quarter of an inch. We don't even need to remove that much. And then we're gonna have this nice little channel on the inside that the glass can set into. And then once we have that, we can start securing this together. So one step at a time, let's go make some routed channels. So a voiceover Danny drop it in here. I wanted to explain two things quickly while I'm using my new router table. First, around why I'm routing three inches from the top and bottom pieces versus the one inch like the sides. So I had to order my mirror ahead of time and after the mirror was ordered, I had changed some of the design. I was going to make this from a one by four but changed it to a one by six. So this kind of changed how the mirror sat inside. I could only make this so big due to the gable slope in the room and I didn't want to cut down the mirror myself, mostly because I didn't have a glass cutter. So I just kind of decided to compensate by making the routed channel a little larger due to this change, but no biggie. 
the router table made this quite easy. The second thing is, if I could make this again, I would have mitered the corners of the frame versus the way I just butted up the pieces. I had already cut the pieces when I had realized this. I certainly didn't want to buy more materials, so I kind of had to commit. It feels like a little bit of a want want moment, but say la vie. Miter come up with a better plan ahead of time there, Danny. <laughs> But if you do get inspired and you want to make this, I totally recommend you miter the corners. Okay, that is all. <laughs> that was slightly scary, but also effective. I mean, we got our channels. I think the only downside to doing it this way was I didn't really know where to stop it. See, as you can see here, I put the channel all the way across. So obviously I have a section that's been taken out at the top. Luckily, I don't think it's gonna be that noticeable. And if it is that noticeable, I think what I could do is just take a piece of wood and actually just fill it in, in the same way that I did with the headboard because of that little dado joint on the back of the handrail. What I wanna do now is actually see if the mirror fits. So <laughs> let's do that first. So hold on. Does she fit? Ah, <laughs> hooray. So what we need to do now is I'm actually going to sand the boards down. Just give them a light sand, especially on the edges. And then we are going to pocket hole these pieces together. And then once it's glued and pocket hold, then we are going to start designing our little piece here. And uh, then we cut that out with the jig and we're gonna be pretty close to having this mirror. So. <laughs> Very exciting. All right, so I'm gonna get this mirror out. Very, very carefully. And then we will be good. Okay, friends, we have a mirror frame. <laughs> okay, look at this. I mean, do you even see the little pieces that I filled in? I mean, it's so minimal. And if you're really like looking hard, I mean, maybe you'll see it. But once we start making all the curves in this, I think it's gonna completely disappear. So I'm not mad. I think it looks pretty cool. Okay, so now that we have our frame made, all we need to do is now map out where our curves are gonna be. Oh boy. Yikes. I have three pot lids here. Please do not let me leave them in here. If you could, could you remind me by the end of this video to put these back in the kitchen or my husband is gonna kill me, truly. I feel like if we do something like this, the other option, like that, you know? Like I, I know I said I want this to be fun. My crab hands won't hold on to anything. We're having fun, okay? Pencil. Line this piece up with this piece. Math, we need math. Okay, so three, three inches down. One and a half. So then if I go one and a half, curve it out a little bit. Yes, yes. Yeah, not right. Sometimes I think you just kind of have to use your eye and math can only go so far and then part of it's just like, does it look good? You know what I mean? Okay, this is gonna be cute. I can tell, I can just tell. 
Although that's off. Oh, math, you've done me dirty again. Oh, I need to do math, okay. Damn it. All right, we're doing math. So we have 48. We have our four circles. That is established. A few moments later. All right, friends. I think I got this to a place where I'm happy. I'm not sure if the math mathed, but I know that <laughs> based on math and a little bit going by eye, I think I was able to get it to a place where I'm happy with it. I stood it up here so I could see it from far away, but I basically tried to just make sure that all the little humps were aligned with each other on each side, that you know that there was enough spacing between each and it was all equal, the top and bottom looks the same. Let's get the jigsaw out and uh, let's cut this bad boy out. Very nerve wracking. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I am just full of sawdust. I have it like all down my shirt right now because some of it got into my, my uh, hood and then it was just, it was over. What a messy, messy day, but a very rewarding day because we have a very cool mirror now. I will say this though, I'm very sad because it mucked up in two spots. I thought I was gonna have enough clearance where I put my screw, my pocket hole. I did have enough clearance, but as soon as I ran my round over bit around one edge, it just bit right into it because it was just, it was so hollow there. It sucks, so I'll show you guys what that looks like. So I have a little spot right here. Oh, it's just a teeny tiny little spot, but it sucks. And then it happened on the opposite corner up here. Ugh, it's so frustrating. But you know what? Honestly, I think I'm gonna try to like sand it up tomorrow a little bit more. And I think once we stain this up, it's gonna be okay. Honestly, let's just call this a really wonderful prototype for something better in the future. But I, uh, I'm done for the day. I'm just pooped. I got, I'm full of sawdust. Oops, is there sawdust on here? Oh no, guys, I'm so sorry. We got a great day ahead of us tomorrow, so see you then. friends I think this is just darn cute you know what I mean <laughs> I am honestly shocked that this turned out as nice as it did I'm gonna be honest I mean not to say that I don't believe in myself but you know you just you just don't know how things are gonna turn out when you go into it for the first time every time I'm making something it's the first time I'm making it I don't make doubles, multiples of anything. So really everything is just a prototype in my world for something better. So as prototypes go, I think this is a cute little piece. I mean, not too bad. I like it, you know, even though it's got a few little hiccups, but you know what? We're gonna go and call this artisanal, one of a kind, <laughs> no one alike, but we're not done. What I wanna do now is that I got it all sanded up. It's ready to go. I actually wanna bring it inside. I wanna stain this up, put a finish on it, and then we can put the mirror in it. So we can move this bad boy inside because we don't need to be in the cold. I have a feeling it's gonna look beautiful stained. I'm excited, I'm excited. We're gonna need this. I'm excited, I'm excited.
I'm not gonna lie, this looks awesome. <laughs> Super happy with this. I also stained underneath because when you're doing a mirror, oh my God, have I learned, do not forget the back because you put the mirror on and it reflects a little bit from where it's under edges and if you don't stain there, it will show. I have learned that one the hard way. We're gonna let this fully dry let it do its thing. And uh, I have a fun little mini project I wanna do up in the bedroom. So let's go do that, cause I'm excited. So I recently purchased a beautiful mural to which I used one panel to transform my chiffon robe, my now wardrobe kind of pseudo closet. However, uh, I had three panels and I was like, what am I gonna do with the other three panels? And then I was like, maybe I could create some like cool, painted piece that you put on the wall and then add a frame to it. But then I was thinking it would be really fun to bring some more of that mural element in here, but do it in a way that doesn't like overpower the room or take away from the beauty of the chiffon robe. So I was thinking, I have this door Ta -da! and it's got these panels. And I also have this panel to which I was thinking, how fun would it be to cut this piece and put it into each of these little panels as if this door is now a window into this world, this land, to wherever it may be. And then I've, it's nice because it's kind of behind the door, so you only really get to see it when you close the door. It calls to the chiffon robe, the beautiful piece on there, but it's not like overpowering. It's not gonna be a focal point. It's just a really fun detail in a room. What do you guys think? Well, even if you hate it, we're doing it anyways. <laughs> so let's start cutting and pasting and see what it looks like. <laughs> I'm excited! great. This is exactly what I hoped for. These colors just look so good on this cocoa malt paint color. Oh my goodness. I'm, I, I love this. I think it's such a fun way to give this door a little personality, to give this room a little personality. And what a great way to use more of the mural pieces. Honestly, I, I'm, I'm obsessed. All right. So now that we have the door finished, I think we should go get the mirror finished. It's probably dry by now. So I am going to put a satin finish on top and then we can get the mirror in and then I think we can hang it up. So let's go finish this mirror. Yeah! I'm excited, okay? God. Dun, 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 dun. It's officially mirror time. I'm so excited. Okay, we have mirror, as you can see. Um, I'm gonna put it back here though. What I have here is some silicone. This is a window and door silicone. So I'm gonna just be running a bead all the way along the edge not getting too, too close because I don't want it to be seen in the mirror reflection um, along the edge. I'm pretty sure you can probably only see about a quarter inch within the mirror on the other side. So I'm just gonna steer clear of that and just keep, well, I got lots of space on the top and bottom, but I'm gonna probably just keep along the edges on the back side. Honestly, I'm thinking with the silicone, this mirror ain't gonna go nowhere. So I think we're gonna be fine. This stuff holds pretty true. I've used it time and time again, never had an issue. Uh, so I'm pretty excited. I think we got this. 
going to make sure that I don't get too close to the edge because I don't want it to spill. Is there a good face to make while siliconing? I don't know. <laughs> All right. We're ready to add mirror. All right, here we go. Dropping it down. Does that not fit perfectly or does that not fit perfectly? Boom! Slap the table, good fit. <laughs> now, question is, what does it look like on the other side? I'm gonna take a peek here. Honestly, it looks amazing. Great! Now we wait for the silicone to dry. Yep. 12 hours. Oh. All right, so we'll hang this up tomorrow. While we're waiting on this, I have something really cool to show you guys. And I thrifted it and we just need to clean it, but I wanna show it to you guys, so let's go see it. Oh, this is an exciting day. Okay, so I wanna show you guys something. We're in bedroom. As you can see, this was the OG chair that was sitting in this corner. I love this chair. I just would like to say right from the get-go, I love this chair. It was my grandmother's chair. It was given to me and I will never get rid of it. Never. <laughs> but here's the thing. I wanted something comfier for this room because I'd actually like to spend more time in here, especially because I'm working so hard to make it over and I'm really looking for another place to do a lot of my reading. Normally I would read in my office. Sometimes I find it a little distracting to read in my office because it's right near my computer. So I was thinking, well, if I created a really nice reading environment up here, it would be a great spot to retreat to. I love the feeling and the vibe in this room. So I needed to find a better chair that wasn't this. <laughs> I will find a better place for this. This is just not a very comfortable reading chair. You know what I mean? On top of that, I also have a light to install, which I think I'm just gonna put the original light in here. That's this one here. It's very elegant. It kind of suits the style in here. So I think I'm gonna put it back on this wall. It also has a switch on it, which this outlet needs to have a switch for it to turn on and off. So I think I am gonna put this back on, but we do need a chair. So let me show you guys the chair that I thrifted. I even have the moment I found it online because I was so excited. Guys, I had to pull up my phone. I think I just found my chair, my reading chair for this bedroom. Check this out. Look, 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 look how cozy that looks. It's like a nice oatmeal color. <sighs> Ta-da! I know that's a disappointment to everyone. Okay, okay, before everyone's like, I'm sorry, what? Bear with me for a second. Okay, this looks, first of all, so cozy. I really like the shape. I like that it had the low arms. I also really liked the texture of this piece. It's got a really nice kind of oatmeal-y with a little bit of, a little speck of gold, but it's like mostly just like an oatmeal color. It's super cozy. The only thing that it didn't have going for it was the feet. I'll show you what the original feet were. So the original feet had these on the back and these on the front. Uh, which was not boding well for me. So what I did was I ended up going to buy some feet. I've already stained them up, they're ready to go. I just have to put some brackets on the bottom of the chair. And then I think this will be a little bit higher and just a little cuter. Honestly, you guys are gonna think this looks cute once we get this on. And once like, you know, you throw a little throw pillow on here, it's gonna be so darling, so darling. So just trust the process if anyone's going like, ugh. Actually, my mother-in-law thought it looked a little bit like retro. I don't know. I don't think it looks that retro. Maybe it does a little. Maybe a little. So what we need to do is we need to get this piece cleaned, but I'm gonna put the legs on it first just so that it stands properly because I've obviously taken the legs off. So I wanna get the legs on and then we're gonna clean this piece nice and good and make sure that it's ready to go to be put in the bedroom. Yay! Okay.
That's good. What do you think of the chair? Oh, you had to bring Sharky? It's a good chair, Boo Boo. What do you think? You want to come up? You like it? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. All right, let's clean this bad boy. Yeah! Good morning, friends. Well, we've been through a long journey to make this wobbly, organic-y, wavy mirror. I don't know what we're calling it, but guess what? The mirror's dry. We're ready to hang this up. I got my D-hook, so I'm gonna hang this up using these. I can't really trust that the top of my mirror is going to be square, so I'm going to square the D-rings off of the mirror on the inside. Uh, that way I can I know that at least it's in the same spot, so when I go to hang it, it's not gonna be crooked. So let's do that, and uh, let's get this thing on the wall. <laughs> I'm excited. I have no idea how this is gonna look, but I got high hopes. I got a wavy hope. I'm gonna go wave this way. <laughs> Well, DIY friends, I gotta say, this little guest bedroom is starting to come together piece by piece, and I love the way this mirror turned out. It brought the perfect amount of charm and personality into this space that I hope for, and you know, while it's not perfect, I think it just adds to that charm, and I'll take her. <laughs> I love the mural on the back door, just a lovely surprise waiting to be discovered, and the chair for $65. This chair was such a great cost-effective solution to give me that cozy corner I've always wanted for myself. I am just feeling happier as a clam at high water. <laughs> Another one bites the dust. <laughs> Another DIY bites the dust, more or less. I love the way that this room is turning out. I'm so happy with the mirror. I'm so happy with that mural behind the door. I think it's so fun. And this chair is so cozy. I cannot wait to read a book in here. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited for the coming episodes. I'm just like, I cannot wait to start everything. Uh, I hope you guys are excited too. Oh my goodness, so much, so much. I'm loving the direction. But you guys should let me know, are you loving the direction? Also sending a thanks again to Wild for partnering with me on this video. A reminder to use the link in my description box with code DIYDanny to get 20% off your first order. Of course, sending so much love to my Patreon family. Oh, I love you guys so much. Thank you for your consistent support. I appreciate it so much. If you are looking for a place to celebrate the world of DIY, share your projects, get advice on your projects, or hey, just wanna hang out and talk DIY, these people are creative, they are fun, and they're just the best people on this planet, so you gotta come and join us. And hey, maybe you like my content, but you wanna watch it ad-free, brand-free, then definitely that is a Patreon perk for you. And of course, my friends, I will see you next week for the next episode. Stay positive, stay creative, and keep on DIYing. Bye-bye. I need to go get my book and a hot tea and a cold drink. Ooh, good combo. Read a book. Oh, that sounds like a lovely afternoon.